yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be done here pretty soon because basically what I'm gonna show people is the code behind these buttons. It's actually quite simple looking. It's the uh, the difficulty in this is not. There's like three functions. There's a login function. There is a request function, and there is a another function for popping up a dialog. Uh, those are the only ones that I know of at this point uh, on the Facebook plugin. Beyond that, the difficulty comes in reading the documentation on their on the um, Facebook API website. So let's go to the. This is the code for main Lua, which is displaying this list of buttons here. And as you can see at the top of the file, let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. I have included a number of links to. Corona documentation and to the Facebook Graph API. Uh, and you're just going to want to read through here and sort of like take your time and examine this because it's, it's, for me, a neophyte at um, Facebook web programming. This is very, it's, it's hard to penetrate because I'm not quite, I don't quite grok how they laid out their documentation versus what I'm supposed to put in my assembled post or get request. And so it's, it's a little black magic-y for me. However, I've worked out a number of them in the past and verified that they work in this example. Things that we will, you'll be able to do if you download this code is given that you've successfully created a Facebook app, which I'll show in a moment, you'll be able to log in you'll be able to post directly to somebody's web page, or not web page, to their Facebook with a what is what I call a simple message. That's a message that is filled in, doesn't have any links or images. You'll be able to post a direct complex uh, post, which is a message, an image, or more, one or more images, uh, links, things like that. You'll be able to request user details from the person who is logged into the Facebook application on their device and get things like their email address and their name and their user ID and some other details that are useful for further digging into the Graph API. These would be arguments that you would need to pass for future get and post requests to get more details. Um, whoops. I will show you how to incorrectly request the friends list because this is the old style no longer works it actually does work but it means something different than what people think I'll show you a method that you can use to get a person's friends list what is really called a taggable friends list I don't know why maybe somebody in the audience here listening today does and then finally, I'll show you how to pop up the feed dialog, which lets the user type in the message themselves and add details. So uh, this is actually all very simple. Uh, once you've got the login working, so we'll just scroll down. In this file, what you're going to see is a section at the top with links, some code that I told you to ignore. It's just me getting rid of the status bar and doing some other things. Then a section that's called utility functions. Uh, and in here basically is um, a function that extends the table uh, library so you can dump out the contents of the table. So you can ignore that too, because I'm just using it to print out debug information for the example. It's not part of actually using Facebook. All right, and then finally, what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, Jason, Facebook. And when you get this, this code is not going to be here. So I'll be watching my account. If you're using, if you're watching today's thing and you type in my number, I will cancel it. Okay, I will, I will close that. This is my. I have an application that I've had for years. I use it to do my development. Here, let's just hide that now. So I use it to make sure that Facebook is still working with my code. Okay, it's a, uh, it's, it's not a very functional Facebook app. So please don't use my code. Fill in your own. If I see it get a lot of like hits suddenly and I know that I'm not running it, I will just delete it and then your your example will stop working and you won't know why. So I just ask that people not use that code. But the point is is that you're going to need JSON, you're going to need the Facebook library, and you're going to need an app ID, which you'll get when you create an app, and we'll go through that in just, just a moment. 
then we finally start to get to the interesting bits. So uh, I included a basic push button library that I've used previously in other Hangouts just to give us the functionality of a push button, which gives me the ability to do these little quick buttons here on the uh, screen. Then we have a listener, which I literally stole from some blog post. Uh, you'll pr it'll probably look kind of familiar. And basically what it does is it prints out the event, the type of event, whether or not it was an error, some other details. Um, and then in my case, I modified it a little bit so that when we did the friends list, it would actually print out the friends. So in one case, the, the data will be a list of of uh, subtables, and it will go through that and print out the details. That'll be the friends list. Not very interesting for this discussion. What we really want to focus on today, what everybody gets stuck on, including me, is this little bit right here. So I have a bunch of helper functions which are attached to these buttons. So when you click these buttons, one of these functions will get called. If you scroll to the bottom, it's very simple. Title, function. Title, function. So if we go up here, the first function is a login. And it's as simple as calling the plugin, login, passing the app ID, an optional listener, which I've defined above, and then a list of the permissions that you want to have. This is the part where it starts to get a little tricky. So when you set up your Facebook app, you request certain permission levels. It's sort of like, this is the maximum permission I'm going to ever request. And that's how you set up your Facebook app. But then, when you log in, you could request a reduced set of permissions. And what you're telling Facebook here is, what are the things that I may ask for in the future? For example, this is saying that I'm going to ask for user details and their friends list. And those are the only things that I want which is actually quite a bit. Uh, what you'll get out of this mix also is the ability to post to their um, Facebook page. Oh, and it's worth noting, I can't show you this um, because I don't have my reflector working right now, but when you run this and you click log in, what's going to happen is it will pop up a dialog and it'll say something to the effect that this application is requesting these Facebook features. It's a, it's a Facebook login. And basically, they can cancel, or they can say OK. And once they've said OK, you should have permissions from then on. Now, I've seen it prompt users every time they restart the application. And I don't know if that's me doing something wrong, or if that's just the way it works today. So there's login. There is request. Probably can add at this, this point. point. Go ahead. Uh, when oh, you um, invoke oh, Facebook oh, login, oh, it shows a dialog uh, with only um, the main uh, permission, like to view public profile. Uh, if you want to, if you want to request publish actions, for example, permission, you have to run Facebook login uh, again. So you, you can't uh, request public profile with <clears throat> publish actions at the same time. So mm. in my applications, what I do is I call Facebook login. Mm -hmm. uh, then when uh, in, on, in the listener, I run another function that uh, retrieves given permissions. And it checks the permissions list with what I need for application. And if the list uh, is different, I invoke face, uh, Facebook login once again with missing uh, permissions. Mm. Yeah, so this actually, so what you're saying is, is as you go along, your permission requirements may change, and you actually have to re-log in or re-request permission changes. And then the user has to say OK. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's one of the things I've always disliked about using Facebook, is it seems like a very disruptive um, methodology, is to exit the application and come back in. but. I won't complain too much. I've complained. So, uh, okay. So we've got login. We've got request. And the basic layout of a request is is the graph API that you're trying to go after. For example, uh, this is I'm trying to post a message to the person who's logged in, me, to their feed. 
So that bit that you see when you log, when you go to your, your home page on your Facebook, 